Inside a step forward in re-establishing diplomatic ties between the United States and Cuba. Negotiators are holding another round of talks here in Washington. My colleague CCTV Sean Caleb's has been following the developments. Sean, what happened today? Any sign of progress? Well, it's it's interesting because uh, there are high-level diplomatic talks going on here in D.C. So I think everyone thinks that it's good. They're meeting face to face. It's interesting, though. I read a report where Cuba says it's the third round of talks. The U.S. says it's the fourth. So if they can't even agree on that. Boy, how far are they apart right. on opening up embassies? Exactly. But uh, this was supposed to be apparently one day of talks. I was at the State Department today. State Department spokeswoman said she thought the talks would wind up today and she would have the information tomorrow. But apparently the talks are now moving on into Friday. So let's take that as something positive because there is a lot for the two sides to, to hash out because the first step toward normalizing relations would be to open embassies in each other's countries. And that's where they want to move. Right now, in Washington, D.C. and in New York, Cuba has what's called an intersection. And the same thing goes in Havana as well. The diplomats down there work in an interest section. Uh, they're the intersection in Cuba, I've been down there before, is kind of ringed with uh, Cuban soldiers who constantly keep a watch on it. This is something Barack Obama has wanted for some time. He was really pushing a very strong agenda. He wanted this done last month when he met in Panama face to face with Raul Castro, Fidel Castro's successor, but it didn't happen that quickly. So, Sean, clearly they've made a lot of progress, but this is not a done deal as far as embassies go. What are the hurdles right now? Well, they are many. Uh, I think that the couple of them, they are close to working out. One big one is Cuba wants to be taken off the U.S. list, saying that it is a state that sponsors terrorism. Now, that was done some time ago, but it takes a 45-day period for congressional review. There were some concerns that some GOP members in Congress, especially those GOP members who live and work in South Florida, might try and throw a wrench in the works and try and hold that up. But apparently, that's not going to happen. So on May 29th, Cuba is scheduled to come off that list. That's a very important step. Secondly, Cuba also wanted a place in the U.S. to do business. It didn't have a bank until today. Now, Stonegate, out of Pompano Beach, that massive chain, all 21 banks of them. They never are, heard of them. <laughs> never heard of them, but you know what? They're going to be able to handle Cuba's finances, and they're going to be able to do things uh, such as work on visas. That's a very important step. Uh, the CEO of Stonegate came out today and issued a statement saying, hopes this is a positive step toward normalization. So uh, that's a couple. So that, the U.S., though, wants items as well. Right now, they are holding uh, at the intersection what they call pro-democracy uh, uh, classes, teaching Cubans about free speech, journalism, uh, things like that. Cuban government does not like that at all. Very frustrated, calling it an illegal movement, so they're going to have to find a way to work through that. And secondly, both Cuba and the U.S., the members of their intersections, want to be allowed to go to various cities within the the countries. Right now, in Havana, the U.S. diplomats are limited to working and going in Havana unless they get permission to go outside. The same true here. They're, they're confined to Washington, the Beltway, which I really can't think of a, a harsher penalty to put on someone, or in New York, they can't leave Manhattan. So they want to be able to do that as, as well. And what you're looking at now is just uh, the gaggle this morning. There was a photo op as the two sides uh, met this morning, and that was about it. Then the doors closed, very little information coming out. How do you think the Cuban Americans in Miami are dealing with all this progress? It's a great question for our international audience as well. I, I don't know if people internationally have a full grasp on just how much power that the, the Cuban dissidents who left the country and you know, many of their family members killed allegedly under the Castro uh, government, uh, they've been very frustrated. They, they simply don't like Castro. They've been fighting for years and years and years to keep the sanctions in place. A lot of them said that they would push their powerful Senator Rubio to continue to try and hold this up. Uh, but there's no easy way to say it. That group is growing older. And now their children meet on Calle Ocho, 8th Street in Miami at Versailles Restaurant, and they talk about the changes. And the kids are much more pragmatic. They understand this is going to change. They understand the world is different. They understand Fidel Castro is, is, is an elderly man, and, and Cuba is facing changes, and they want to have a say in these changes. So it's, it's going to be interesting. Things are moving in that direction. We'll see how quickly they can get the embassies open. All right. Open. I know you'll be watching it all for us. Sean Caleb, thank you so much. For more